Good evening. Welcome to St. Mary's and our celebration of the Epiphany of the Lord. Please join together in singing our gathering song, We Three Kings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, Grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. And 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rise and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. In the opening prayer of Mass tonight, we prayed, O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star. Stars certainly are powerful symbols for us. Many nations place stars on their flags and in their official seals. Those who attain a certain level of ex excellence or fame in their profession are called stars. Inspirational speakers tell us to reach for the stars. Throughout history, these luminous points of light shining against the darkness have fascinated us. We're drawn toward them, though they may remain out of reach from us. And so the stars entice us with the way that they twinkle. Just recently, we witnessed in some parts of the world the magic of the Christmas star with the alignment of the planets of Jupiter and Saturn. They were so close together that they appeared as one bright shining star. This conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn may have an even closer tie to the biblical story of the birth of Jesus Christ than its occurrence so close to Christmas this particular year. As noted by Johannes Kepler in the 17th century, a similar conjunction occurred in 7 BC and could be an astronomical origin of the star of Bethlehem that guided the wise men that we read about in today's gospel story. And this epiphany star can certainly still lead people to Jesus as it did the Magi. And the trick is to see its twinkling points for what they are. No, they're not simply our atmosphere's bending of their light. In this case, I think the eyes of faith see something entirely differently something that entices people to make journeys out of their complacency toward an encounter with our God made flesh. This is the epiphany star. And through the eyes of faith, we see how the magi themselves are twinkling points of light, twinkling points of the star. Their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh can hold as much meaning for us as they did in those early Christians, for those early Christians who first heard the Gospel of Matthew proclaimed. And we know that gold is not simply money, but it's something valuable. It's worthy of a king. Think how we hand over freely what is valuable to us, our time, our attention, our money, for those people and those things that are most precious to us. The question for us is whether we can hand over our gold to Christ, like the Magi did. And likewise, frankincense is not simply a pleasant smelling substance we place upon burning charcoal. It symbolizes our prayerfulness, the smoke rising to heaven. And so frankincense was also associated with the priests and the Levites of old who were entrusted with its use during worship. The Magi, in placing the frankincense before the child Jesus, acknowledge him as a priest, as a person who can intercede for them with God. And so through the incarnation, we know that Jesus is the perfect intercessor for us. In his person, divinity and humanity meet in a perfect union. Do we place our trust in Jesus when we stand in need of prayer? Finally, there's the unusual gift of myrrh, which was an ointment used to prepare the body for burial. It points to why Jesus came into the world, to die so that we might have eternal life through him. As members of his mystical body, we too are called to die to our selfish pride, to our vanity, our envy, our anger. We, like the Magi, can come to Jesus seeking a new purpose, we can re be reborn as people free from the things that hold us captive. And along with the Magi, the Holy Family twinkles as points of our epiphany star. Certainly, Joseph shows us the need for courage in our faith. He who was not afraid and trusted in his dreams shows us that wonderful faith. 
And Mary, who said yes to God, little did she realize that her yes would undo Eve's no, which brought sin and death into our world. In saying yes to the will of God, we can be like Mary in helping God's plan of redemption for the world to unfold in our own lives. And of course, there is the child, Christ child, the sixth point of our epiphany star. It is helpful to remember that the star of David is a star composed of two intersecting triangles, one pointed upward, showing humanity's desire for God, and the other point down, showing God's willingness to come and to be with us. Jesus, a descendant of David, is the true star that the Magi traveled to see and whom we have come to worship today on this Feast of the Epiphany. At the close of Mass, we will pray, Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere. In being led by the Epiphany star to Christ, who is our true light, may we no longer stumble in the darkness, but instead walk in faith and in hope. As the Magi before us, we pray that we may always follow his star and help to be that brightness to those around us. God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present to our loving Father our prayers of petition. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he may have good health and wisdom of heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations that they respect religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer religious persecution, that they may be allowed to freely practice their faith in Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of our community and the world, that they be a sign of God's delight in creation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, and religious life, and for our seminarians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish, Jim Bruno and Betty Bednar, for whom this weekend's Masses are offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the quiet of our hearts and for those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we present you our needs now. We ask you to hear them and to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray on these gifts of your church in which are offered now, not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Geoffrey, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come to the table of the Lord, please join in singing, One Bread, One Body. One cup of love, sing with 
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate, through Christ our Lord. Just an announcement today reminds you that this Thursday we celebrate our monthly day of Eucharistic adoration, beginning following the morning mass, concluding at three o'clock with the Chaplet of Divine Mercy and Benediction, and there will be an opportunity for confessions following that. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Please respond amen to each invocation. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you to a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. We go forth from our celebration singing, Go Talon on the Mountain. Shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. mountain that Jesus Christ is born. And oh, when they had heard it, they all bowed down and prayed. They traveled on together to where the babe was laid. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in all O manger, the humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation, a blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. You too enjoy the sunshine. We need lots of sun, lots of warmth. It's going to be lovely. See?